Okay, so you, like I said, you've been doing this. When you've just been calculating definite integrals, you haven't necessarily been looking at the graphs, but it builds it into it for you. Okay, you don't really have to worry about this if you're just computing the definite integral. But they will give you pictures like this, and they will ask you questions based on it. So you have to understand that if your region is below the x-axis, you calculate the area, but it is considered negative area. Okay, so looking at this picture right here, we have two semicircles. One is smaller than the other. One is below the x-axis, one is above the x-axis. So if we're trying to calculate the value of the definite integral from 0 to 2 of f of x, that means the area between the curve and the x-axis between 0 and 2, we're talking about this first semicircle right here. Now, it's below the x-axis, so I'm going to go ahead and stick a negative there because I know this is going to be negative area. Um, we do have to remember our... Um, Area formula for a circle. Okay, they're not expecting you to write the equation of the circle and anti differentiate and use the fundamental theorem of calculus to plug in the upper limit and the lower limit. They're just expecting you to use geometric formulas. Okay, so area of a circle is pi r squared. Okay, the radius of this circle is, be careful, it ain't two, it is one, is the radius. And this is half of a circle, so it's half of pi r squared, and r is 1, so the integral from 0 to 2 of this function is negative 1 half pi, or you probably see it as negative pi over 2 as an answer choice, just because it saves ink and space. Okay, now if we are trying to find it from 0 to 6, we're going all the way from the beginning. Well, from 0 to 2, that was negative pi over 2. Plus, from 2 to 6, that's going to be the radius of this one is 2. So, 2 squared is 4. So, the area of the whole circle is 4 pi. But we've only got half the circle, so that's 2 pi. And let's go ahead and get a common denominator. So we can put these together. So it's plus 2 pi over 2. So that's 4 pi over 2. So negative pi plus 4 pi is 3 pi. 3 pi over 2 is the area under the curve between 0 and 6. Now, what if they ask us for the integral from 1 to 4? So really what we're looking at is we're looking at a fourth of a circle under the axis and a fourth of a circle over an axis. So let's see here. If um, we got pi over 2 for the semicircle, we're looking at half of that, so it's negative pi over 4. And we got 2 pi for the big one, but we're looking at half of that, so that's just pi. So express that as over 4, so uh, negative pi plus 4 pi is 3 pi over 4. Which we also could have looked at it as, well, we've just got half of what we had for the total. Okay, but same conclusion. Now, this is a very important concept right here, this last one. The integral from 1 to 6 of the absolute value of the function. Absolute value makes everything positive. So essentially what this last one does is it flips this first circle over the axis and it makes it positive. Okay, so it's no longer negative area, it's now positive area. So the area from 1 to 2 we just found was pi over 4, but this time it's positive. And the area from 2 to 6 is still 2 pi, so express that over 4, so we've got pi plus 8 pi, that is 9 pi over 4 for the absolute value. Okay, 
So to kind of relate this to our Wi-Fi problem, I keep on referencing that because it's a really good application to remember. Um, this last one is like your total distance traveled, okay? Total distance traveled is the absolute value of your function. So it's going to take any negative distances, meaning you were moving to the left or you were moving backwards, it's going to make those positive, okay? Um, but uh, 0 to 6 of f of x, that's like your displacement. It's taking into consideration negative distance um, and things like that. Okay, it's like the, dis the difference between me talking about, okay, if I start right here and I go forward two squares and forward three squares and back one square, my displacement is, what I lost count, four. Okay, I'm four squares away from where I started, but my total distance traveled is six because I went forward five and back one, so I went a total of six, but in relationship to where I started, it's four. My displacement is four. What's my relationship to where I started? My place, okay? My total distance is how many steps did I have to take? That's the absolute value. Absolute value is total distance. No absolute value is displacement, okay? We gotta get that in our head when we talk about some applications. Difference uh, the left integral of f of x dx from um, 1 to 6. It would okay. still be non positive for it, so how fast it, or it takes it away from negative. If it didn't have, it did, if it didn't have the absolute value, um, then it would be, let's see here, um, negative pi over 4 plus 8 pi over 4, so it'd be 7 pi over 4. Okay. 7. So the absolute value doesn't just necessarily mean it's going to be the same number of negative right. and positive. Right, right, right. It's not, right, that, that's a good good question, okay? Um, if we were doing the integral from 0 to 6 at the absolute value of f of x, it wouldn't be 3 pi over 2, okay? The number itself would be bigger. Um, we're not just slapping absolute values over our answer. We've got to, the absolute value is about the function. So it's making negative y values in the function positive, um, which is going to completely change that number at the end. Okay. Good question. Yes. Okay, uh, let's look at another one. This one's a line, or well, two lines. Okay, we've got different slopes here. The integral from 0 to 3, so I would split this up into two triangles. We've got the triangle from 0 to 1, which is going to give us a negative area, and the triangle from 1 to 3, which is going to give us a positive area. So um, area of the triangle is 1 half times the base times the height. Uh, here's, here's something helpful. If the y value is negative, use the negative y value, okay? Um, that will help you remember to get that negative in there because it's below the axis. Plus, uh, our second triangle, we've got 1 half times its width is 3, its height is 2. So we've got negative 1 half plus 3, oh, which is 2.5, which is 5 halves. Okay, the integral from 3 to 5, We've got another positive triangle and a negative triangle. Okay, the key is you've always got to use the x-axis. If your function crosses the x-axis, you got to cut your figure off and start drawing a new one. Okay. So for the first one, we have one half. Its width is one. Its height is two. For the second one, one half times its width is one. Its height is negative two. So we've got positive 1 plus negative 1. That area is 0. It offsets itself. Because, and if you look at it, if, according to the picture, that makes sense. We've got this positive area. We have the exact same triangle down here, but it's negative area. So total, we have no area. Okay. 
Now, here's the thinking exercise, and I would not be surprised if you had a question like this. I really wouldn't. I've seen questions like this before in the exam. Find A, B, and C such that the following integrals are as large as possible. So for the first one, we're starting at zero. We know the starting point. We're starting at zero, and we've got to decide where do we end so that the total area is as big as possible. So if we start at zero and start moving to the right, well, we've got negative area, right? So we've got to keep going to get some positive area. How far should we go before we start losing area again? Four. Okay, four, that is correct. Um, so we've got negative area, we kind of make that back up by the time we get to two. So then we start adding area, adding area, adding area. At four, that area is going to start taking away again. So A should be four. Now it didn't ask us to find the integral, it just asked us to find the bound. Okay. Now the next one though, we get to pick both numbers, where we start and where we end. So where should we start and end so that we accumulate the most area? One, two, three. One, two, four. Okay. We just want positive area, we don't want to take anything away from it, so just consider the positive uh, part B is 1, C is 4. Okay, now, something to mention. We're always moving left to right, okay? We're always moving left to right. Uh, if you start moving right to left, it starts going backwards. So technically, the integral from 4 to 1 okay. would be negative area because you're going from right to left. So even though it's above the axis, you're going right to left, it's the opposite, so it's negative area. So you always want to make sure you're going from left to right when you're trying to calculate these integrals and, and talk about them like that, okay? All right, so 